Well, hello, and welcome back to the workshop. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a little mistake I saw one of my favorite YouTubers, Eric Jacobs, a.k.a. The Nomadic Fanatic. I know there's people that aren't real fond of him, but I find him entertaining. Um, he was doing a lighting swap uh, from the old fixtures to some new LED fixtures, and he did something that kind of concerned me with the way he was doing the wiring. And I'm going to demonstrate what he did why it's not going to work well, and uh, what he can do, and what you can do uh, to make your wiring connections and mobile applications safe and permanent. Now we're going to come down here to the wire. We've got just a standard, I believe this is a 16 gauge wire. I'm going to cut the wire. So we have our two ends that need to be joined. He was right in the stripping back approximately yeah, three-eighths to half an inch of insulation on each piece. And I just stripped a too small of a gauge. Be real careful with that. There we go. Now, we take, he took the wires and simply twisted them together, taped them. He stripped back a bit more than I did. Let me get more insulation off of here so we've got better contact. He simply twisted and taped. I'm not going to tape here because I want to show you what happens in the joint. So we're twisted and we're going down the road. I don't know if I can mimic this fast enough in the video, but can you see here? It's a little hard to show. This over time is going to move back and forth. You can see how it goes. Normal vibration is going to shake that out. Over time, it'll come loose. You'll come against, particularly in that RV, you're going to come against metal and wood. And it actually has a cloth ceiling as well. It's a real good recipe for a potential fire. Now, a better way to do this is to take your ends, once you stripped them, twist them on each end. Now, we've got too much exposed wire here. I'm going to trim it back to where you got about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of the copper exposed. We're going to take inline butt connector, slide it in. And crimp. And of course, that's going to make me look like an ass. I'm going to have to splice that part out. Damn it. Okay. And there is a very good reason that you test these things when you first crimp them. Okay, that one's not going anywhere. There's no give in that at all. I've still got too much wire there. And we push it in. And you can see this bell, which is where I crimped on the first one. That was my mistake. You want to crimp inside that bell, right? See how I'm inside there? That's where the aluminum crush sleeve is. Just push down. Now, no matter how much shaking and vibrating you go do down the road, that's not coming loose. 
So this is really the way that joint should be made. That's not going to come loose and uh, I can tell you out of first hand experience in my first career as a mechanic I saw a lot of cars that had those twist and tape uh, joints. They have had a lot of fires involved in them. Please don't ever use those. Always at the very least use a uh, splice, a butt splice connector like this or solder and uh, tape your joint. Now that I've got the joint made um, you can do an extra layer of protection and put tape on here but this is just for a demo so I'm not going to do it but there you go that's all you need to know now uh, like I say always if you like what I'm doing click the like button and subscribe to my videos so you're notified when more of them come out and uh, get out to your shop be safe and be blessed thanks